is the Glass Cannon Network. Hello, scoundrels, and welcome back to Haunted City, a Blades in the Dark actual play here on the Glass Cannon Network. My name is Jared Logan. I'm the GM for this game. We're playing Blades in the Dark, the excellent role-playing game by John Harper and Evil Hat. And once again, I have with me my illustrious cast, Josephine McAdam, Abu Salim, and Ross Bryant. What's up, guys? What's up? So, hi, hi. Oh, man. I'm so excited for this. We're going, going in this game. It's going to mm-hmm. be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting uh, buck wild, Jared. It's going to get buck oh, wild. Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys are, are you guys going to wild out today? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. as, you know, as you know, Jared, I'm, I'm quite familiar with wild now, and I'm ready to wild out. Oh, yeah. You were on wild and out. <laughs> I was on wild and out. <laughs> I, was, I was literally ever. on Nick Cannon's wild and out. Were you really? Wow, wow, I wow. was. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Accomplished freestyle rapper, you guys. Oh my god! <laughs> you haven't Incredible. lived until you've done short form improv with Waka Flocka Flame. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, uh, well, you're you're very talented. You can rap off the top of your head, so you know. Um, <laughs> Oh my god! They needed you on Wild and Out, man. Like they um, had to. <laughs> has it happened in game yet? No. Why haven't we gotten some Selyak? So yeah, I want your Selyak to a rap. <laughs> Go off the dome. Hey, if it happens, <laughs> look, I'm not going to force anything. If it happens organically, <laughs> you never know. Maybe, 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 maybe Selyak will spit some spit some bars. Or well, now I'm going to keep great. teeing it up, and I'm going to have like characters constantly going. <laughs> Perhaps I could give you a deal if you were to say, <laughs> no. speak rhythmically and rhyme for a little while. <laughs> yeah. That's Show the only improve, way. Show yeah, Khan. Yeah. Oh, um, I could give you the serum, but I need to hear a sort of rhythmic uh, rhyming. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll look uh, forward to that. All right, yeah. Well, we got to use everybody's talents, you know? Because, uh, right. like, J- Joe plays cas- classical piano, and we definitely have to work that into a... Uh... Remember when I asked Joe what her favorite music was? And she's Stop. like, well, when Don't I'm not even... playing Don't. classical Don't piano... Don't bring it up again. When I'm Don't. not playing Chopin uh, in, my, in my parlor. Uh, oh, so all right. Great. Well, uh, we're, you're going after a, a spirit trafficker today. That is the score you chose. Oh um, yeah. Uh, shall we? Shall we get started? Shall we go ahead and hu- <gasps> jump in? Me, it's a big score. To, it. Come on, I'm ready, let's Jared. Go. Let's go. You know what I'm about to say? Oh please! Oh, yeah. A thousand years ago, yes. this was a land of beauty and magic. Oh, then came the cataclysm that ripped open the gates of the dead and blotted out the sun. The city of Duskfall is a metropolis of tenements and factories, surrounded by crackling lightning towers that keep out the ravening hordes of the undead. Outside the city is a wasteland of ghosts. Inside is a teeming hive of scum and villainy, intrigue and corruption. Life is cheap in a city ruled by death. The sun is gone. The only thing that shines in Duskfall are the blades in the dark. And so we did it. I said the thing. And now it's time to play. Um, We're going to go on a score. Uh, You have been targeting for a while. You've been targeting Flint. Flint is a rival of... Which of your characters has him as a rival? I believe it's Celiac. Right? Yeah, so yes. he's Celiac. He's so a- Celiac has, uh, you know, when you when you created your character, you chose a friend and a rival. The rival you chose was Flint, a spirit trafficker. You've learned through uh, the rumor mill that Flint has been selling spirits to your patron, to the Path of Echoes. He is earning coin from the Path of Echoes. He possibly stands to eclipse you in their affections and mm. that cannot be allowed to continue you cannot allow your patron to have a different source of spirits than yourselves and so you are going to take flint out you specifically earned a veteran um crow's veil 
upgrade to your crew so that you can murder <laughs> with impunity <laughs> without the spirit wardens and the spirit crows coming after you. Mm-hmm. So you keep saying you're going to murder this guy, but you've already had a couple run-ins with him. First of all, Valkos broke into his <laughs> lair and caused a ruckus and got some intel from it, but mainly let Flint know that you were gunning for him uh, with those actions. And then Flint sent some men to your last score, to, to the mansion of Victoria Song in, in White oh, Crown. Yeah. Uh, who th- those guys tussled with uh, Valkos a little bit, and Valkos uh, got out of it without uh, too much damage, but uh, it was it was close there it's, for a minute. It's very close. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so now you've decided to to take the fight to Flint, and I-, I told you that because Flint lives so close to you in Six Crown, his lair is so close to you. Um, I think that it counts as turf. So you, uh, in these cl- this claims map that your crew has, you will take uh, the turf square if you, if you take out Flint in some way. Mm. And that's helpful because you see your, if you look at the, the crew sheet, the rep meter, um, you can fill in turf blocks in the, on the rep meter, and then that's like permanent rep that you have. So you don't have to Ooh. earn as much rep to go up a level. Nice. Oh, Pretty yeah. useful. So, uh, so taking this turf will be really, really helpful for you. I okay. need to ask, which character are you playing, Ross Bryant? Are you going to play the currently possessed by Ophelia, Ekaprag Wody, or are you going to play Selyak Khan for this? Selyak um, sat the last one out to to go into religious trances to de-stress himself right. from the last uh, adventure. Um. So and and fl- as you said, Flint is his personal rival. I think like the way that he deals in spirits, uh, Selyak considers distasteful and, um, frankly, blasphemous. And um, so yeah, I think he has a personal stake in this, and so it will be Mister Khan who joins this this little uh, score. And 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 Ekaprag is as someone else at the at the, in the driver's seat half the time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, Ophelia slash Ekaprag have their own little projects to attend to. Yes, oh, they, they, ha- they have to figure some things out or uh, ba- uh, fight battles of the soul right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they will stay home. Very good. They'll stay back in the grotto and the rest of you will take on Flint. So um, I guess we're ready for the score. I mean, uh, basically the goal here, the, the, the victory condition is taking over his operation, right? So uh, even if he doesn't die, if you make him unable to lead his group anymore, if, if you take him off the, off the map, then you have succeeded. Um, right now you're saying you're going to do that through murder. So mm-hmm. I guess what I will ask is what will your approach be for this score? And let me list them off, even though a lot of them are way outside of what you're going to try. Assault. You don't seems, know. Well, assault to me seems like a, a very reasonable way to do this. Um, deception, stealth, occult, social, or transport. I what are you thinking think, your approach is? Sorry, uh, mm-hmm. sorry, Abu, what did you say? I was going to say, I think we should probably... I would have told you the lay of his space, right? I've mm-hmm. gone in this space. I know there's a mm-hmm. specific wardrobe that contains a specific spirit that he cares about. Um, and, you know, I entered through the, I think it was through the window, right? I climbed in through a window or something or some such. You did. That, yes, that, you did. So, you know, he's probably going to be expecting that. It's probably the place is going to be full of traps. I think what better way of turning this place inside out by having all the spirits that he has in the space turn on him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is a, you know, maybe there is something with all the spirits that that he can, that he has in there of shaking and waking them up and basically forcing them out. And we pick them out that way. So you're talking about releasing all of the spirits that Flint is selling that, that he has in his mm-hmm. his gallery. Okay, starting a, a spiritual a spiritual Revolt. uprising. Absolutely. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, 
So would you call that an occult approach, or is it that something you're going like to do it. through stealth or through assault? Feels like a cult, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels a cult. Okay. Um, if it's a cult, then I need to know what is the arcane method, and um, you know I'm going to be I'm going to be a tough GM. Like you, there are maybe hundreds of spirits inside of Flint's lair. This will be hard. They are being held in spirit bottles, which is traditionally a secure way to keep a spirit mm. um, and to be able to traffic it. So in what way are you using the occult to release all of them all at once? How are you doing this? Glass shatters, right? So maybe there is something to be said about um, If only we had someone who was good at uh, making making destructive sort of uh, <laughs> Um, kind of. You know, I mean, this is this is sounding like a like an occultic assault. But if we want to, <laughs> if we want to, or it's not occult. occult. Maybe if you're using, maybe if you're using Juliet to create something that breaks a lot of glass at once. Maybe it's oh, just like a an sound. Mm-hmm. Like maybe there could be a piercing sound that just is. You know that I don't know. Mm. Essentially, just I'm essentially thinking we we're stronger. We're stronger attacking coming them out than in essentially yeah, yeah. Um, i think well, that's i love that because you know, yeah my immediate thought bomb. was i can yeah and perhaps just, you can make a sort of neutron type of bomb that can just <laughs> like uh, <laughs> uh well here's just what I'll target say. a specific i material. love this plan but but uh it normally you would acquire an asset to create some sort of uh, like to get some sort of weapon like this or you would do a long-term project if you were going to invent a weapon like this right a new one yeah large yeah. bomb is what's in the like standard stuff but if i needed oh, do you, to what do you custom- have what, what was the bomb? A large bomb is standard like in the sample creations i could like flashback for that one you certainly could uh so that's not like something that just breaks glass, though. That's no, a bomb. it's not. It's an actual bomb. <laughs> I could allow you to try to really quickly put something together that breaks glass, like some yeah, sort I'm of. Yeah, I'm looking through the creations right now. I'm like, what could I do? I... Well, I could allow you, but I'm going to start you at like, you know, uh, I might start you with like limited effect, right? Because right, you're right, kind right. of doing it quickly without a long-term project or something like yeah. that. And you would have to push yourself and take devil's bargains to mm-hmm. get yourself to a place where it would be, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be a little easier and more viable. I think it's such a cool idea that I, I mean, as your GM, I'm saying that is an option. Do you want that? Do, but I think that that doesn't sound like a cult. That sounds like assault, right? Right. It does sound like that. Because uh, I think a cult is is summoning a demon, right, to give him to give the whole place a shake, and then just making it like you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. A cult is engaging a supernatural power, and uh, this would be more like assault. Do violence to a target. You're yeah. doing violence to all of the ju- the spirit jars. Well, I mean, we don't. We're simply releasing them, right? Rather than violating them. Yeah, you're not violating them. You're just, mm-hmm. you're, but but I do think it is like you're aiming some kind of weapon at the house, and mm. you're attacking how are the we, house. How are we not going to get attacked by them? Is my question <laughs> in this well, plan? Well, that's that's, uh, that's I think where I I, I come in. Uh, 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 um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, if if you cho- if you cho- we're still kind of choosing the the approach here, but if you choose assault, then you need the detail is the point of attack, so you could kind of choose. Um, if okay. you are indeed going to leave it up to Juliet to create this weapon, you could possibly be in a tree or in another house nearby or on a rooftop or something, and that would be the point of attack, right? Mm-hmm. Or you could send it to them in the mail. That's true, yeah, and that counts as well. So sh- should we say assault or should we should we go a more supernatural route and say occult? We'd have to kind of replan it a little bit. Or do we yeah. like... I think uh, I think assault sounds like... Let's go for it. I believe in your tinkering skills and you've got all of yeah. us helping, you know? This is such... A, this would be such a large scale occultic thing that it, I th- it, it, this looks to me as though it's something that would require a ritual to execute at the scale to make it effective. And that requires a lot more planning. Um, right. And I I'm just like at times four of the stress essence. to begin with. It's all good. You're it's fine. gonna be great. It's gonna be uh, great. 
Let's see how it goes. Um, oh, so, okay, we'll, we'll assault and the point of attack. Uh, please define that for me. So then, as in the, the, the what we're using? Or? Yeah, so and, and where, where are you where? using it from? And where are, you po- <sighs> where are you pointing it? Okay, so this so it's going to be some sort of like device mm-hmm. sound like device, shatter, yeah. a shattering device mm. bomb and, thing and it should be and... inside oh, okay so I think you're right in the sense of delivering it in some form of post yeah perhaps maybe I could oh, mailing it okay. I, or I could perhaps you know snag uh, one of the guards from you know on one of their patrol duties beat them up and basically tell them they've got to bring this in and if they do not I'll kill their children um, yeah, you could so get one, of, one a, of their hench, yeah. henchmen to bring it in or get it why don't yeah. you just run in with it with some like dope headphones on or something absolutely not and just, then get just headphones. oh sure that's that's right I forgot that part no, you could also we, just throw it through a window. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of a projectile. Oh, fine, really. all right, guys, throw it through a window. <laughs> Don't let me threaten people's children's lives. Okay, fine. There'll be plenty of time for threatening people's children. Don't. Okay. You know, you know in the video game that like projectile where you hit it and then there's the whoo, the like radi- like you see the circles come out from it. It's like an. That's air a lot of video it. games, Josephine. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said the video game. <laughs> <laughs> the video games. <laughs> So, 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 tell me again. Uh, well, I think we, or tell me for the first time, what exactly <laughs> is the point of attack? Yeah, because we, uh, through a window. I, I just want to, I, I want to so. be clear. Abu's plan, Valkos's plan, is not bad. You could grab one of Flint's men, strap it to him, and force him into the building somehow. <clears throat> you know, uh, under threat. That is one way to get your device inside, or maybe your device can be aimed. Uh, we, this device is completely made up. Uh, and we're not even sure if you're going to be able to successfully <laughs> make it. Put yeah. it. Yeah, make it. So, uh, you know, you can sky's the limit here. What do you think? What is the point of attack? I you like throw it I, through a window, no? Or do you want to deliver it in? Um, I feel like having a person bring it somewhere allows us to, assuming it's successful, get it, position it in the most appropriate and advantageous okay, spot. Okay, let's do that then. I, I, deep in the heart of this uh, of this building. Yeah. Um, uh, let's threaten someone. Okay. Why not lean on 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 Velko's uh, particular set of skills to um to get this thing to the to the right place? That uh, okay. then it all comes down to this thing. This thing's exe- being built well and Velko's ability to inspire loyalty in a in an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, so many things are going to have to happen here. This is going to get really complex because we're inventing a device that isn't even in the rule book <laughs> in order to do this. But here's what I'm going to do. Right now, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to ask you what your loadout will be. Let's do that first. What what will your loadout be for this score? I'm going heavy. heavy. Heavy wars. Yeah, yeah everybody, we're everybody hide heavy. That we're attacking. We're going to go heavy too because we're going to war. Yeah. yeah, all right, great, I love this. So, um, th- uh, knowing that, I'm now gonna do the engagement roll. So you get one die automatically. Now, uh, it's supposed to be based on, hey, uh, is the is the target vulnerable to this approach, right? Um, does the plan's detail expose an inv- a vulnerability? I think so, because I didn't expect you guys to do it this way in a hundred years. <laughs> and I don't think that any of the security that Flint has set up has prepared for this exact, I mean, obviously has not prepared for this exact crazy plan. And then also is the operation particularly bold or daring? Yeah, because after you, yes, it is. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a cockamamie crazy plan. So <laughs> I'm giving you a die for each of those. Um, can friends or contacts provide aid? No. Uh, and now I need to take die away. Um, so each major disadvantage in this case, um, I'm going to take a die away because Flint has been prepped for this. He knows that you're, he knows an attack is coming. Valkos already broke in once. Flint wants to destroy you. He's prepped not just for an attack. He's prepped for you, you guys. So that's two dice. Okay. 
Here we go. Are you ready? Ready. Mm. I always roll the engagement roll so that the players don't get mad at each other if it's bad. Remember, <laughs> if I if I get a six, you're in a controlled situation. If I get a four or five, you're in a risky situation. And if I get a one, two, or three, you're in a desperate situation to start. And I have rolled... A six. You're in a controlled situation. Yes. yes. Is this so our means, first one? That is, yes. And that was on two dice you yes. rolled that six. So oh, well, well. nice. Very nice. So I'm going to rule that because of that, you have already, you've already gotten through the first hurdle. You've already strapped this device to one of Flint's men who you caught <laughs> off, out in the world. Uh, and, uh, you are somehow forcing him to go back into Flint's lair. That is what I need to see. I need to see you do that. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So, so you can all be with him right now. You're yeah, uh, tell off. me where you're, maybe you're in an alley near Flint's lair. Uh, and, uh, this guy is like is sitting in front of you and there's a device strapped to him. And by the way, Joe, I think I'm going to need some kind of flashback. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. In fact, let's do that now. You're attaching you this now? thing to him. Okay. Yes. So yeah, making um, fine adjustments. And this is where we flash back to the same shot where I'm also making adjustments <laughs> on the final touches of this beautiful, <laughs> uh, sound pulse bomb sound Sonic. pulse bomb okay the sound pulse bomb requires a requires a, a tinkering roll i'm sorry i shouldn't tell you what action to use it could it could be a consort roll it, <laughs> it could be a prowl roll but it'll probably be a tinker roll it's gonna uh, be a tinker roll right and um i'm gonna tell you that but as i said it's gonna be for limited effect and it's gonna be risky meaning something could go off something yeah, that yeah. could be a bad effect um, this is a, a flashback. So this is in your workshop, you know, a day before or two days before you were quickly devising this device. Um, so it'll be for a limited effect. You will not be able to complete it unless you right now push yourself to get additional effect. Uh, and, I was going to say, does a, a workbench, bargain. does a workbench add an effect? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That helps. Yeah, the workshop it, it pumps up, uh, should help with the effect, right? Okay, yeah, I'll allow it to... It, bump you up to standard so okay, you can so roll standard? to get it done right now get it but great. if you want it to work to really great. well you could also take a devil's bargain right now what's tell me that you i i feel like it's cooking what's the devil's bargain <laughs> the devil's bargain i'm going to give you is that you have had to work quickly and use up all of your uh like little technical supplies to make this thing so during the score you can't pull anything out of your bandolier what? <laughs> I'm not taking that. Are you okay. kidding? Then okay. push yourself. Push yourself, lady. Let's do I'm it. I'm going to put... Yeah, I'll push it. It's cool. Push it. I'm just okay. Six good. Stress. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay, okay, I've pushed. I pushed so this, this is risky for standard? Uh, no, it's risky for great yeah. now because I told you yeah. the workshop can bump up your effect one. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, but... Okay. Take Wasn't it, it limited? Take it. Yeah, okay, take I'm taking it. Just it. take it. <laughs> I just feel guilty, man. Wait, let's, yeah, let's did, just go over did, the rules you again. You did start at limited. We started, started at limited. limited. I think this gets it us to standard. Bumped it up to standard. Yeah, and then if you if you push yourself in addition, that would you could bump it up to. Oh, you want the right. extra die, not the. Uh, not the yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it'll be standard. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank oh, you for sorry, playing Josephine. fair. Okay, just okay, you know, okay. it's one of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good boys. Oh, you know, there's here a five. The there's a five. Hey, so it's here we go. That's a success with the consequence. A success with the consequence. So the success with the consequence is that you have to get him all the way. He has to go all the way into the spirit gallery in the lair, or it's not going to do what you want it to do, which is release all of these ghosts. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So, so then he can't do it outside on the front steps. He can't do it downstairs in the kitchen. He has got to get all the way to the second floor into that spirit gallery, and that's when you have to set it off. And Joe, okay. in addition to the two stress you took to push yourself to get that done, you uh -huh. also need to take two stress for that flashback. Ah, shit. So <laughs> then, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ah, say, wait. right, we've got this guy, right? And we have to get into this specific space. This is the ploy. He captured me. 
and he's going to yes. lead me in and take me into the space and that Perfect. is where we will detonate it all right what so this happens? guy's like i'm not doing nothing i won't betray flint sorry no not happening then i'm gonna beat the crap out of this man <laughs> can you scare him into doing what you say absolutely uh what's the position controlled uh yes it's controlled the standard effect uh i would say yes this seems so important i would like to assist okay great so you can take an extra die and Thank because you. of that veteran ability i took nice. i take no stress for that oh well, that's oh, awesome beautiful and then I roll Love it. Love watching and that's them. That's a crit, work. baby. That's a crit. Oh yes. That's two sixes. Come I, on. I'll do whatever you want. Just don't kill me. Yeah. Please. Yeah. And believe me, when he will only kill your flesh, we have ways of making you suffer afterwards. No. Oh. No. Don't put me in a jar, please. Don't put me in one of the jars. Um. <laughs> yes. No sound. one should be put there. The sound pulse bomb. What does it look like? Ooh. Well, I think I made it look a little spooky and like thematic. We all like aesthetics here, so it's like, uh, <laughs> like I think it looks like um um, looks like a clamp that's on his chest, and it's it's got like spikes going out, and like in the center, there's almost like two eyes, like two glowing. Uh, orbs that look like eyes peering out. What is this thing? What are you doing to me? What is this? Shh, shh, stay still. Or it might go off. Ah. Do exactly as we say. Okay. Um, and now I want to ask, how does it detonate? Um. Is it something, is it something Valkos needs to do? Or is it something, yeah, it wow, it really switch. does remote like that? Remote, Or is it yeah. timer? <laughs> I think it I, I, I think it should be remote. I think it should be with me. I'm in the room, right? I, mean, I think amazing, like but... if, you know, I will detonate it because it's sound, right? As long as I as long as I do it and I can have like earplugs in, yeah. I can then get the fuck out of dodge. Yeah, um, which so I feel it's like I'm like giving Valkos the detonator, the earplugs, and uh, you know what to do. All <laughs> right, we... Jared, I have to ask, what happens if um you get a trauma? In the if middle you get of a trauma, score? you are if you if you fill up on stress, you're out of the the score, and you okay. gain a trauma. Mm. How many stress away are, from a trauma are you? One. Oh. <laughs> right, right, right. Look, listen. You can play. You can play really good. I did a score with like one away from a trauma, and I and it was a success. So uh -huh. just, just yeah, be aware. I'm sure. To, yeah. Just, same. You'll be fine. You're gonna just. just you're gonna just don't get stressed. Just don't you get stressed. Tell, you all can tell that Juliet is a little exhausted from having put together this very complex device uh, at, at short notice, but she thinks it will work. Man, um, I had so many other cool devices I wanted to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look, I, you didn't let me take away your bandolier, so there's still options I know. available to I you. I know, I know, I know. Uh, you, um, you, now that all that's left to do is to take this guy in and to make him uh, reasonably and convincingly tell them that he has captured you, Valkos. Mm. So um, he's ready to go. He's got this weird thing with two eyes, like mm. blinking, strapped to him on his chest. Uh, and he is well, going to do whatever you tell him to I do. Think he's, I think he's holding it. I think if he's strapped, it looks a bit weird. You see okay. what I mean? Oh, okay. Can we put it under a coat? Yeah, yeah so just like, underneath. Yeah. Sure. I, I find, yeah, underneath, I think it's pretty, yeah. yeah, it's like clamped on then, yeah, put a jacket, put, mm -hmm. Cool. Absolutely, um, it's not, um, it's it's unobtrusive right now. Um, so uh, Valkos, is he going to lead you in? And uh, are do you think yeah. that it's going to make him like implode just because of the like oh, no, blast of sound? Hmm. I so, can't um, wait what, to find out. I can't wait to see what this thing does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and can I? And so I'd say that he's leading the way, and I'm kind of behind him, and I'm like, and I, you know, as as he's leading the way, I'd be like. You know, if this goes well, you could get a cut. A cut of... What? His entire purse? Flint? Everything. This. Your life forward. You're yeah. in this with us now. 
You're one of us. Make an action roll. Oh, Convince I, him. <laughs> all right, I'm going to command. I think that that works. Okay, would it be controlled again? Yeah, I really liked that. I really liked that move. I thought I okay. thought that that was a smart move. So okay. yes, that's controlled for uh, standard effect. He will be, he will he will go along. He will be convincing as as convincing as he is able. If you succeed, oh! you rolled a three. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you oh, what boy. happens. Let me tell you oh, what happens. Boy. All right. He gets uh, inside the courtyard of the house. The place is swarming with guards. I'm going to assume that Seljak and Juliet are nearby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yes. Nearby meaning not right outside the no. lair, but maybe like a street over or something like that. Is that is that reasonable? I think maybe yeah, like almost like pressed back to a wall, waiting to yeah, um, he, with, a, yeah. with a finger in ear, waiting to hear a a, a unique sound. <laughs> yes. You. You failed, and the consequence is- In convincing is, him though, right? In convincing him. So the consequence is, look, he's still afraid of you. He's still afraid <clears throat> you're gonna hurt him. That that role went well earlier. <clears throat> so he's going along with the plan, but what you, fa <laughs> what you failed to do is make him like a, a convincing actor. So <clears throat> he, pulls oh, no. you in, he pulls you into the courtyard and all these other guards come to meet him. He goes, look here. I've caught this guy all by myself. He wasn't too much trouble for me because <laughs> I used my knife. So we need to go to the gallery of and spirits like, immediately. And I, and I kind of stand and look at everyone. And this is where I kind of am sort of like, can you, can you hear them? Can you? And I'm just gonna start bolting it for the spirit for the spirit gallery. Oh, okay, but great. With um, the guy? No, by myself because I'm gonna get them to follow me. Oh, interesting. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, you oh. bolt for the spirit gallery. So he he has he's gotten extra guards. Okay, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what you realize is you're bolting into the house is that not only has he gotten extra guards, he's gotten extra big angry dogs. And they um, pull, they have these dogs on a chain. And when you start running for the house, they let them off the chain. And now snarling Doberman like <laughs> dogs are like racing toward you with saliva dripping from their mouths as they, as they growl menacingly. Uh, in addition, there are, let's see, six men <gasps> that were on the front door and they are running toward you as well. Um, and so I want to know if you want to get away from them and into the house, I need an action roll, or if you want to confront any of them, I need an I'm action gonna, roll. I'm going to, I'm going to get into the house. I'm going to run and get into the house. Okay. So here's what I'm going to say, because there's so much opposition and because, you know, you, you I, I just think it's limited effect unless you push or something because you were, you were coming in for the front way and their job was to protect the front door. So mm -hmm. getting around them. So right now, this is desperate for limited effect right now. Okay. Meaning you can't, you can't I'm make gonna... it, you can't trade position for effect right now. You have to push, yeah. I'm gonna push myself. Okay, uh, great. To get what, standard effect or no? Yeah, that'll give you standard effect. Okay. You want to do that? Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And what action are you using? Finesse. Ooh. I'm using my. I'm using my. Doing you know some I mean? quarterback it's moves. It's almost like. Oh, honestly, it's almost like I'm like breathing, like, and I'm focusing on my breath as I'm kind of moving through this this, yeah, this storm, yeah, hearing yeah. the dog in the box, and it's and it's slow and it's calming down. And as I start running, I see my first obstacle, and as I go through my first obstacle, I roll a six. There yes. we go. Yes. Okay. Um, because it's finesse, I think I think it has to do with uh, you know picking and rolling. Yeah, like you <laughs> said, uh, putting like uh, supporting beams between you and the animals, uh, and your six means that you get inside. So you are now inside. Uh, you've gotten past the courtyard, and uh, you're looking at the interior of this place, which you vaguely remember. There are steps leading upstairs to the spirit gallery that you remember. Are you heading that way? Absolutely. Okay, I wanna ask what Juliet and Seljak are doing 
And they might do be we, nothing. It's up to you. Do we hear the dogs barking or anything like that? I, yeah, mm. I think you need an action roll to know kind of what's going on. Yeah, I think it would, wouldn't know, but just like that there's commotion, you know? That's what I'm asking. Coming, I, think, okay. I think an action roll would maybe uh, cement what you're uh, aware of. How's your survey? Um, I have one. Um, that's going to be control too. I actually, uh, I, I would like to flashback if I can, Jared. Yes, Ooh, great. Yes. I love it when I'm being hard enough that people need flashbacks. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so. We're not just in a random... When you saw us pressed to the wall there, that wasn't a random place. This was a place that uh, that, that Celiac has, has selected. Uh, oh, like You see, like, maps rolled out, and they're old, like, weathered, like, burned on the sides, like things that he's found in archives. And it's, it's an aged uh, version of the city, like, like parts of the city that others have been built on top of, the sort of thing that he's... that he pours over. And, um... And this wall used to be part of a massive, like, old um, complex here in, in Six Towers, of which uh, um, uh, Flint's stronghold was once a part. Um, this was like a like a stable house of a, of, of a larger building. And it's a dead building. It doesn't exist anymore. Just this wall remains. But all the etheric essence of it, all the, the echoes of the people in it were are still there and accessible if you have a ghost key that is almost like a key that lets unlocks into the ghost field. And so basically what I would like to do here is like have seen how these these old buildings connect and by by not swiveling and dashing down the street, but rather placing a key into this wall can open up and exit inside Flint's uh, house. Oh, okay, I see. So yeah, you're traveling yeah, through yeah, the ghost yeah. field and then into Flint's house. Correct. Using a flashback. Here's what I'm going to say. Only take one stress for that flashback because you uh, have set up your character as someone who has mastered the real estate and the history of the city and its environs. Mm -hmm. So that's very in character for you. So only one stress for that flashback, but I would like an action roll to see how well you're able to lead Juliet through the ghost field to this uh, to to this building into Flint's lair. Great. What action are you going to use? I think um then if, if it's leading, then I think the if it was just the studying, I would have said study your survey, but as we're passing through the ghost field, it's a tune. Okay, great. Mm. Or would it be controlled? Hand. It would be controlled and it will be for standard effect. You will get into Flint's building through the ghost field. Um, oh. Now here's one where I would like to trade position for effect. I would like to make it risky in order to get into the gallery itself. Oh, uh, I'll allow it. Okay. Oh my god. So yeah. you're traveling through the ghost field, and let me speak a little bit about what that looks like. Um, suddenly, it's like you pass into this place where all the sounds are kind of echoey, and um, it looks a little bit surreal. Like, yes, the rest of the building, the ghost shadow of this building, the echo of it is there, but it, it doesn't quite hold together solidly. Like, uh, steps sort of float a little bit. Uh, the various boards and stones that hold together kind of shake and wobble and undulate uh, as you move through them. And sometimes Great. even like a, a, a strange brick will kind of float by, you know? Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, uh, so. Juliet is clutching to Celiac Lake. Never been in the ghost field, I don't think. Oh, yeah. yeah um, no. It's terrifying. Um, and in addition to that, uh, as you're climbing some stairs toward Flint's Lair, you look down and you can see a little bit of six towers in the ghost field, and you see, like, dark spirits, like, kind of moving along the streets. Like, yes. um, there are errant ghosts in Duskfall that have not been caught uh, and bought and sold like Flint would do, so they're <laughs> out there somewhere. Um, can, but, can you see, like, non-feral, like, can we see... Can I see like Ophelia at our grotto? Like, is that 
No, you don't have quite that much of a bird's eye view where you can okay. pick out. You just, I'm just saying that you see yeah, wraiths yeah, yeah. kind of moving along the okay. streets here and there. Um, you are in the ghost zone. And, and so, this also um, seems, I'm going to push to get an extra die for this. Okay, and great. Can I, can I assist this in some weird <laughs> attuny way? In the sense that, like, maybe, you know, because, actually, no, you know what, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, maybe yeah. I don't know that this is a plan. If you'd like right. to, you may. I, I have an idea for how you might. Okay, all right, yeah, I'd like to. Okay, so go ahead and take your uh, one stress, and I think that when you arrive in the gallery where they keep all of the ghost jars, Valkos, you, mm -hmm. like, take chalk and draw a door on a wall. Oh, yes. beautiful. Great. Amazing. Here, here it comes. That's a lot of dice. But still, the highest is a five. Wait, okay. did you? How much have you got in a tune? Two. Two. Yeah. Oh crap. I got two extra die, but yeah, okay. it was it was a lot of low and one five. But hey, wow. yeah. Um, but there's a luckily, five. you five. rolled that five. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, that is going to be a uh, success with a complication. So as uh, right after Falco draws that door, Juliet and uh, Celiac spill out Oosh. into the gallery. You can hear dogs barking. You can hear footsteps running up after Valkos. And what should be the complication? What should be the complication? Um, I'm going to say that I'm going to say that the ghost field um, like this like cold from the ghost field and this mist from the ghost field is leaking into the room and uh, your, your ghost key is not able to shut the ghost field. You're not able Holy to shut fuck. it behind you. And okay. so there's just a big hole open into the ghost field right in the middle of this room right now. And, mm -hmm. and because of that, the room is kind of filling with this ectoplasmic fog. Cool. Um, could, oh, could help no. you or hinder you. Uh, I'm gonna probably try to make sure it hinders you in some way so that it is a complication. <laughs> what do you do now? And I'm gonna tell you that the threat is on its way because there right. is, uh, everybody is uh, running up behind you. We're all hey, with tools, aren't we? Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, go on. I was gonna say, where, where, is, where is the bomb? Where is the bomb? And I'm like, he'll be here, but you have your tools, yes? And I'm gonna pull out from my heavy tools, obviously, a crowbar, and I'm essentially gonna start opening these doors. Um, I start kind of making my way through and just, oh, you know, using my using my might to open, you know, even the the door which uh, he had the uh, specific special lady in. Yeah, I'm just gonna try and basically open that one first. If and just you're, so if you're doing that, where's the hostage uh, yeah. at this moment? The hostage so is probably doing, on his way. Yeah, if okay. you're doing that, I'm gonna say, give me the detonator. Give it. I, I will pass do it this. to Josephine. <laughs> Oh, sorry, shit, Juliet. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Uh, our identities are, are really kind of smeared Honestly. at this point. Who are it's, we? It's the what? ghost field. It's the ghost yes, field. Yes, the ghost field. So um, you uh, begin prying open the cabinet that you knew <laughs> held a spirit called Galena. And yes. can I just say, and just as I'm opening this, I'm going to look to Celia and be like, we could have just done this at the beginning. Why did I have to go through the front door? <laughs> It's a great question, and sometimes, and, and, but the, all will become clear because you guys have carefully planned this. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I can open this and thing. All will like, become clear. One of the bottle's not yet open. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, because so we need the bomb. We would Juliet bomb. or Selyak like to do anything before these uh, these gentlemen arrive? I guess I should do something with my time. Um, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to. To uh, I'm going to set up uh, like a, a trail of like eye blind poison right at the doorway that they'll enter. A trail of it? I don't know. It's poison, so I feel like I could like, you know, pour it on the ground. Some like eye blind poison that'll like as they pass over it will seep up. Mm -hmm. Like the fumes will. Oh, is that how you want it to work? That's, Let me that's have an how action it works, roll. Jared. I don't think that, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Does eye blind poison explode into people's eyes from the floor? Is that I didn't how say it explode, <laughs> I said fumes, the fumes of the chemicals. 
Okay, let me just look up eye blind poison. I'm just kidding, it's a really powder. Quick. Okay, why would they call it a poison <laughs> if it's a powder? <laughs> well, you probably have to deliver it to someone orally and then they become blind, well, right? Well, you throw it in their face, so maybe just wait at the a, door it's like, a surprise! It's a face. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, how about skull fire? Because those are toxic fumes. You want to create, uh, uh, regardless, I'm going to need an action roll for you to create yes. a cloud of toxic fumes. And if I could just answer Velko's question for a second, I think that this was, in order to achieve this level of proximity to the room, we needed someone on the inside to draw, to draw that the door. door. And okay. so like, oh, yeah. part of that flashbacking preparation was mm. was Celiac mm -hmm. kind of coaching Velko's through, like drawing this sigilistic door, door on the wall so that, it could be, so that it could be open from the inside. Nice. Nice We've done, done it all too well, though, because it stayed open. Yes. Um, what action are you going to use, Juliet? Um, I mean, this is just for for placing it correctly, really, and handling. I, I want to use Tinker because I don't want to misuse the the skull fire. Okay. Poison. Um, this seems this skull fire. Uh, can you? Do you have so, that in front of you? Could you read yes, off what yeah. it says to me? Uh, it, Toxic fumes from overly heated Leviathan blood causes incapacitating migraines. I'm gonna oh, put it okay. outside the door, the entryway. Well, it, that says fumes, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, it so, does. So um, you have to work very quickly. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say this is desperate for standard effect. Okay. Make sure to mark your desperate XP. Will do. Desperate what action are you standard using? Tinker. Yes. Okay. And nice. there's a five. There's a yeah, five. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to rule that the complication is that not only is there a weird fog, there's also a cloud of toxic fumes now. And the two are mingling together, and it is hard to tell where one ends and the other begins. So oh, all boy. of you are in danger of inhaling the toxic fumes, but you <laughs> haven't yet. You haven't yeah. yet. So, okay. Okay. so toxic fumes may start blowing into the room in a minute, and then okay. it could be a danger for you. Um, uh, Ju Juliet is, it's an easy complication. Juliet's not able to precisely control the direction of a toxic cloud. But it is but largely. I, I then look to, um, I mean, no, sorry, no, is uh, we need to get, we need Celiac's action, right? In the sense of like before the next turn. Because I was going to suggest that actually maybe not close the door is, an, is a good thing. Because when they come in, we go out. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Okay, let me tell you, let me tell you this. Uh, well, actually, Celiac, you take an action and then I'll tell you what happens with the guys coming up the stairs. Do we have, act uh, he, um, Val Valkos is ripping open cabinets. Do we see the bottle with Galena? So here's what happens. Um, Juliet's uh, little mitre or whatever she set up there like starts to fume like this like yellow cloud. It starts to mingle with the weird vapors coming in from the ghost field. Uh, Valkos br breaks open that big heavy oak cabinet. That bottle is not there. Of course he's protecting Galena. It is that there's an empty space on the shelf where that bottle was, my friend. But is there he other has, bottles? Yeah, there are other bottles there. Yep. Okay. Selyak, what are you doing? Okay, so our um this this quarry is is not here. But um Hmm. Then I think it's just like it's 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 smashing time, right? We gotta get all these yeah. these things. Yeah, blast them. <laughs> okay, what does that mean? I mean, what are we waiting for? Hit the, hit the if we don't well, have the, the guy's not in here. So Remember, I, had, yeah, I, didn't, so I, I didn't get a perfect roll. The 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 consequence is it has to be the bomb has the to be in this, this guy room. Is so this on is his thing. way though. So I on think we should, we should we should we should wait by the entrance or exit of the spirit door because, as they yeah. walk in here, and then we have a look Agreed. to see as soon as the kind of gets into the space, we detonate it. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to narrate what's happening. So uh, it sounds like, Selyak, you're kind of, in, in, unless I'm wrong, you're kind of waiting to see if you're going to exit right as this guy enters. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, we're all waiting by the ghost <laughs> door, right? Look. You know what uh, no, you can do? You look, can no, hold some. No plan goes according to, you know, the exactly the way that you prepped it. <laughs> this one is is looking very strange at this point. 
<laughs> you guys earned yourselves an action before they got to the top of the stairs by getting into the building the way you did successfully. I am letting you have an... Uh, Juliet has taken an action. Valkos has taken an action. Do you want an action? Yeah, Tell me for, what it is. Yeah, damn it. I mean, the idea here was, was spirit insurrection, right? Right. Yes. So uh, I think we don't we can't like detonate and get them all at this moment but that's right. coming right so, but but i am going to begin to pop pop bottles you're just starting Great. to pop bottles so yeah. uh in the cabinet that valkos has got open you just start smashing bottles mm -hmm. and that is when our men get to the top of the stairs and let's see how they do with the fumes well first the dogs <laughs> The dogs roll a three. They immediately start collapsing. No. And now let's, let's do the men. Tier one men. Here we go. Fortune roll to see how they deal with the fumes. Tier one men. <laughs> they rolled a three as well. They come crashing in and they're, they've are they got lightning hooks that they looks like they're gonna try to use as tasers. Mm -hmm. oh, and as they approach the three of you, like you can see them just start going, fall to their knees as horrifying migraines just fill their skulls. Uh, they're falling to their knees. Oh, Let's see ladies, aren't you tired of these tier one men? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's That's how you upgrade. take care of tier one men. Upgrade it's time girl. to upgrade to a tier four men. Call me. <laughs> uh, DM me. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to see. I, I don't think that all of them were affected. Okay. And sure, there are sure, a lot sure. of guards here. So let's see how many of the... I said there were six guys before, right? Let's see yeah. how many didn't make it. So if I roll a six, all of them didn't make it. If I roll... Okay. So it says one didn't make it. So the others are still... What? Spreading. what? But listen, not at full capacity. They're mm -hmm. fighting with migraines. So one has fallen to the ground and is just like vomiting. And the others are kind of like sw swinging, like poorly swinging their lightning hooks at you. Okay. Okay. Is bomb guy there? Oh, is bomb guy there? Let's see. No. He Fuck. didn't come up the stairs. Okay. He decided to abandon the plan. The shit. So you have five guys, uh, and by the way, it's it's crowded in here now. They have lightning hooks. They're trying to hit you with them, but they uh, they're also kind of like trying to hold down nausea and trying to see straight. So I, I think, think that that allows all of you to take one action before, the, the, you know, to, to deal with the fact that they're attacking you right now. And you will take that action right after we come back from this break. So you've got some time while we talk to our sponsors to think about what you're gonna do. Ooh. We'll come back. Will this chaos start to take form oh, it's, and become it's a more successful chaos. score? It's it's more fun. chaos. Let's just create more chaos. It's more fun. We'll be right back with more Haunted City on the Glass Cannon Network in a minute. We're back, and the crew has infiltrated the layer of Flint, their rival, the, the business that is trying to put them out of business, and they are trying to liberate every spirit in this spirit trafficker's collection. Right now, they are in the spirit gallery where he keeps all of his spirit jars filled with various ghosts and they are surrounded by Flint's men who are guards, but they're also all former rail jacks. So these guys have like very aggressive, like mutton chops. So there's a lot of really aggressive facial hair going on with these guys. <laughs> they look like they've been, they look like they've been living outside the walls of Duskfall for years. Uh, meaning they are uh, leathery Flint's men. They, they- Tier they, one they, men. They are yeah. tier one fellows and uh they're all carrying <laughs> lightning hooks that they're going to use usually lightning hooks are used against spirits but they're using they're trying to use them against you now you have a slight advantage in that juliet set up a trap for them so right now some of them are swinging at uh corners where you're actually not standing the place is filled with this strange fog that is emanating from the ghost field uh they are uh trying to hold down their lunch because the poison has made them nauseous and given them these horrible migraines so i want to ask um I i'm going to go ahead and put it this way even though even though you have all these advantages against them they are they are about to hit you with 
with their lightning hooks mm -hmm. and 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 shock you and tase you, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. We so, I'm gonna oh, go, go. throw a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was hilarious. It was three people started talking at once, and then the one that uh, finished her <laughs> sentence was Joseph. Throw, throw a grenade. grenade. <laughs> okay. Hey, if it works, uh, you're gonna throw a grenade in a small room filled with about ten people. Yeah, I would like to throw it towards the six people. Uh, okay, you want to? You, 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 uh, I'm gonna just say they're not all in like one little cluster where you can. Sure, just, sure. I mean, listen. It's a grenade, so you're gonna blow yourself up as well, is what I'm saying. Unless it's that, so this room unless that's you small? get it, unless you get a critical, in which case, hey, what no about problem. This, then? How about this? I'm gonna use one of my uh, loadouts, throwing knives, for everyone to back into the um, into the into the ghost field for us to get out, and then essentially you can throw a grenade in the last minute as we're all exiting. You want to try that? Yeah. Basically, yeah. it so, sounds like Valkos is going to cover your exit into the ghost field, and then you're going to throw a grenade after you've entered the ghost yeah, field. Yeah, yeah, we can do yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Selyak, uh, is there anything you'd like to do, or are you just going along with this plan, which is fine? That's cool. Um, you'd facilitate some... our movement through the ghost field yeah, as well. Right? Yeah. So... I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, if, if, yes. Okay. I will do that. So, uh, here's what's going to happen. I need an action from Valkos. I need an mm. action from Juliet. And I need an uh, action from Selyak. Selyak, this weird, like, kind of blurring of the ghost field is making navigation in this room difficult. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the roles from Valkos and Juliet are going to be harder unless you succeed in, in somehow helping them. So, <clears throat> let's start with your role. What action will you use? Great. I mean, uh, it is once again navigating the ghost field. So I will, I will attune, um, and I can. I think I can. I've, I've, at this point, dropped down that chainmail spirit mask, which allows me to see things a little bit more clearly. So perhaps the disorientation that this um, electroplasmic vapor creates is a little less confusing to me now once I've got my mask on. Um, so perhaps that affects the the effect of of this role. Yeah, I would say that it's risky for standard effect because you're using your loadout items correctly. Okay, let's go for it. Five. Okay. Five. Mm -hmm. Success mm -hmm. with a consequence. Um, the consequence is that you have successfully um, you have successful you are able to successfully lead them back over the threshold into the the zone of the dead, but you have not completely slipped your attackers they're still on top of you okay? okay so there's still a chance that uh they are going to zap one of you if these other roles don't go well so i want to know what <laughs> Va valkos you're covering the retreat so i yep. think it's your turn what action are you so using i'm using my finesse throwing throwing knives zap, zap, zap. oh you're using kind your vibe. finesse to throw yep. the knives i yep. love this mm -hmm. so that's yeah. we're like backing out at the same time right yeah, like yeah, it's absolutely. almost shoulder to shoulder you're, you're just shoulder to shoulder in a little trio you're hearing like hearing just the, like yes yeah. yeah. that backwards speak as i'm, oh, yeah. as I'm kind like of tugging a, yeah, you like in the correct rotating, direction like sort of the, uh, circle here yeah mm. and the action uh, is not intended to destroy the opposition it's just to get them to back off so you can get out is that correct absolutely it's it's to push them yes to push them back is to create space that's the yeah. idea okay great then um i think that that is going to be risky mm. uh the risk is that one of them might zap you mm. and the uh effect will be standard you will get everybody you will you will create space you will be able to make your exit okay let's do this guys mm -hmm. six Six. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Valkos throws a couple knives, and these guys who were already disoriented, they back up a little bit. They're afraid of getting uh, poked by a very sharp metal edge. And then it is time, uh, as you guys enter the ghost field, for Juliet to do her worst. Do it. I'm going to throw two grenades, one in each hand, because the doors are all open, right? You've used the crowbar and opened up the... Yep. So All the glasses and everything, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be many explosions. So I will throw both out. One that's like towards the men and one towards just sort of the room and the, the cabinets. 
What action are you using? Wreck. Yep, that sounds right. How many dots do you have in wreck? Two. <laughs> this, because you your two friends have done such a good job for you, this is controlled for uh, standard effect. You will blow shit up. Yes. Can I assist? You can if you'd like. Could take I maybe, yeah, I'll take a stress to help throw one of them for you as well. So then we're, so we're both, you tell me where to direct it to and I'll throw mm -hmm. it with you. Mm -hmm. So you get an extra die. Mm hmm. Love that. Okay. Um, can I trade position in, for a greater yeah, effect? You, you want to be risky for great effect? Oh my yeah. gosh. Mm -hmm. So great effect means that not only do you take out all these guards, you also break open every spirit bottle in here. Yes. And we, and we have yet to actually detonate our man. I know, exactly. I can't exactly, wait to detonate yeah. that from the other so side. let what happens. The risk, of course, is that you could take some damage, There's right? There's a lot of risk. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, and so one extra die from Valkos. Mm. Mm. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Box cars, baby. <laughs> so... This is a, insane. It's perfectly timed. Selyak actually gets the door to the ghost field closed behind you right after your grenades go in. And you you see everybody beyond the ghost field as like these like very faint shadows. Like you can only just barely see into the spirit gallery and you feel the explosion as this sort of like slight lurch and you hear like But now you're inside the ghost field and you've closed off the entrance into reality. Reality. You just rather. see like the seam kind of shut. Yeah. Uh, as that chalk like erases itself off the wall. And um, now I'm going to tell you something else that happens. Because you're in the ghost field, suddenly oh, yeah. you see ghosts <laughs> appearing. <laughs> and in fact, one of them clearly is one of the guards. Mm -hmm. uh, now, those uh, ghosts are still attached to bodies, so uh, that one looks like it's tethered to something. Uh, but uh, there's also the hundreds of bottles that you've just exploded open, <laughs> and suddenly the ghost field fills with hundreds of ghosts. All right, I would like to um, communicate with them. Uh, and I, like, the... So speaking into the ghost field, which probably like has that like, you you have been imprisoned for far too long. The elemental spirit within you yearns to be free. <laughs> Whoever can find you, see, needs vengeance from you. Where, where is Flint? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so that remuneration can be meted out. <laughs> okay, so um, for the most part, like, uh, you know, you think that you're getting their attention. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, one of them, like, uh, seems to have, uh, you know, a lot of them just look like flickering shadows right now. Uh, but one has really taken, like, very clear form as, like, a fat man, like, with, like, you know, like meat and like uh, food dribbling down his chin, and he looks at you and he's he's like, "Bring my wine. Where's my meat?" And he's like approaching Who you, holding a fork and a knife. Um, and uh, so uh, you need you need you need to give me an action that sort of uh, gets these spirits to listen to you. Okay, I don't want to. I mean. I want to use a tune for everything. I'm, I'm really this trying to sway them. So It does sound oh. like you're swaying. I will push myself to sway them. And okay. I'm going to assist as Thank well. You. I feel so uh, bad not Valco being able saying? to so assist. I'm, I'm using my Severosi sort of, as well, like tongue to almost, again, yeah. communicate this to people and be like, as he's saying, like, you know, um, seek vengeance and, and you know, find remuneration. Re I'm like, in Hasunoka, Hasunoka. And then it's yeah. like, when he says Flint, I'm like, Flint, Flint, Flint. <laughs> kind of like really throwing it out there. Um, very Great. good. Okay, uh, I love this. 
Let's have prison. that sway roll. Make sure you take stress to assist Valkos. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Valkos using the old Severosi ghost speaker tongue, the, yeah. the, the <laughs> shamanic tongue that they would use to speak to ghosts back in Severos. Dope. And uh, Val uh, Valkos has assisted. You have pushed yourself. You've taken two stress as well. Celiac, and wow. let me have the roll. That is so many dice. You've what's really the, stacked the odds in your favor. What's the what's the uh, position? Oh, uh, it is um, uh, right now. It's desperate because this this uh, rampaging spirit looks like uh -huh. it's going to hurt you. Okay, uh, it's going to do something to you. It, Where's my no, meat? Go, ah! <laughs> okay, here um, we go. Two desperate for, the, for, for standard the assist. effect. <gasps> Critical! Critical. <laughs> Two <Yes>. sixes. <laughs> Suddenly, oh God, we're killing it. Suddenly, Flint, another spirit. Flint. Flint. Suddenly, another spirit leaps on top of the one that seems like feral and is coming after you, and like digs his hands into the fat man's spirit and pulls his ectoplasm like so that it's like loose and yanks his ectoplasm apart until it feels like like weird like wispy strands of ectoplasm and stands in front of you he's wearing what looks like an old blue coats uniform uh and he's crackling with electroplasmic energy this spirit and he's like you want flint follow yes. me uh and he starts <laughs> leading you uh, to through the ghost field yeah. Okay. Great. Yes. We follow. Oh, incredible. Um, he is leading you down stairs that don't exist in the real world. He's leading you down a different set of stairs down into a dark space. He looks back and it's so shadowy here that the only thing that's lit up are these little electroplasmic little bands of electricity that kind of flow through him for a second. He's like, this way. And you can see that other spirits are following you now. Good. Because Holy your sway roll was so successful with a critical. Good. Let's see how many other spirits are following you. Because a lot of the spirits are feral, so they're not able to even be swayed, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. how many were, you know, the most valuable spirits that a spirit trafficker can market in are ones that are not feral, obviously. Spirits that can, like, talk, know things, possess people. And uh, six spirits are following <laughs> you right now. Ooh. Roll deep. Oh, shit. Yes. So you have a, a small little crowd of spirits in addition to this guy that's like leading you um, and he's he says follow me and he's leading you downstairs we, in we the follow, ghost field. Of course. Yeah, we follow. Okay, so again, these stairs are kind of, it's the ghost field so they're not quite solid. Like when you land on one, it's kind of like it's floating <clears throat> on water uh, and you have to kind of keep your balance as you go down deeper, deeper and you uh, realize because you can just barely perceive the echo of the house outside of the ghost field that you are going subterranean. You are now going down deep into the bowels of like the earth beneath Flint's lair. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally you arrive in this uh, place that's completely dark and there is um, cold ectoplasm lapping at your heels and at, at your shins. Mm. Uh, and he turns and he's like, he's out there. I can feel him. <sighs> finally. You shall Finally, do he'll pay for what he did to me. And, and you can see that this ghost that led you is trying to cross over. Uh huh. Yes. It's like, yes. It is time to make him pay. It's this uh, key, which I think is like a ring, almost like goes over mm. a couple of fingers and just like inserts it into an aperture that opens up to accept it and. We emerge into this space. Okay, there is no cold ectoplasm in the in reality. You are in some sort of subterranean chamber, and you uh, there's not a lot of light, but you can now see that there is some light. That that uh, someone is holding a flickering candle nearby in front of a large iron door with like a, it has like a wheel on it, and whoever this person is is uh, uh, trying to like turn this big valve to open this big iron door in this subterranean space. The, you've just opened a door into the real world from the ghost field and the spirits behind you, <coughs> the six spirits behind you are flooding into it. Uh, and, you know, there's like a, a matronly woman in like a bonnet and like, uh, uh, like a, a strange like man who looks like he has like lizard scales down his body <laughs> like is moving toward them. 
uh, 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 the charred corpse of somebody. It looks like it, it was burnt in a fire or something. And they're all like kind of reaching toward this person that's holding the candle in front of this large vault. Is there anyone else with him? Is the guy with the bomb with him? The guy with the bomb is not with him, but you are correct, Valkos. It is Flint. And he turns back with a look of horror on his face <laughs> as he sees the three of you and a small army of ghosts <laughs> suddenly <laughs> bursting into the room uh, by his candlelight. Uh, get back! Get back! I'm going to throw a throwing <laughs> knife at him. Uh, okay. He's going to open this vault. He's mm. almost done doing it. Okay. Uh, get him! Get him! Stop him! <laughs> okay, let's see how quick Valkos is with the throwing knife. Here we go. <sighs> and what's the position? The position for this is risky, and it will be for standard effect. You will stop him from turning it one final time and getting it open. I'm gonna push myself. And then I've got one... I've got one more until I get super stressed, until I'm, like, traumatized. Oh, oh my okay, god. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, it's success with a consequence. Um, you, uh, your knife goes ching, and it uh, it lodges in the. Uh, it doesn't hurt him. That would have been like a full success. Mm. It lodges like in the thing that he's trying to turn, so he can't turn it any farther. Your knife actually is sticking out of the metal. Like that's how hard you threw it. Uh, that it got it gained purchase there, and he can't quite turn it. So he's like trying to turn it the last bit away to get it open. Uh, and that's when the ghosts are just on top of him, like mm -hmm. pulling at him and trying to like uh, tear him apart. And he's like, ah! And then from within the vault, you hear. It's something black starts to ooze out of the crack of the uh, almost open door. Do I know what um, this is? It is Especially. some kind of... It's something old. Yeah. It's something old and dead mm -hmm. that he has been keeping under his house. So, okay. uh, I'm going to rule that you bought time. The thing is oh not... Oh, my God. The thing is not out of the door, but it's trying to get out. So, what would everybody like to do? Let's start with Juliet, who hasn't acted yet. <laughs> <laughs> um... Oh God, he's getting he's getting like totally attacked by the ghosts. Oh yeah, in a way that doesn't feel like I need to worry about stopping him. Uh, doesn't right. feel like it. Okay. Nope. Um, there's black ooze coming out. I, uh, uh, Celiac, Celiac, what is that? Um, and I'm I'm sorry to ask, but is this is this a ghost? Is this a is this an old, such an old ghost that it's become something else? You don't know. I don't know. Um, don't there's know. no okay. way to know. This, okay. um, can I lick it? A remnant. Yeah, yeah. Can we suck it? <laughs> uh, you can. You can taste it. You can taste it. <laughs> can, we go, can we get a taste? We, we know that's Abu's. Uh, that's Abu's thing, man. Mo yeah. is that when he finds something strange in an RPG, he puts what? it in his mouth. Like when he is. In an episode mm -hmm. of Vampires of Pittsburgh, all those many years ago. Yes. Uh, I, I would never want to stop uh, um, Valkos from from giving it a little, a little, a little lick. Right. But, uh, says, get a taste. Get a so, taste. taste, baby. So yeah, because just like. An entity that is dwelled here a very long time. A remnant of an older world. And, uh, um... Shit. Um, I am going to use... I'm gonna drink some Quicksilver. Mm. Oh, of Every, course! Everybody's drinking. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, it's a toxic metallic fluid. Opens your mind further to the ghost feel. You get an extra die to attune, but you suffer a level two harm. Wow. Um, okay, your level two harm is going to be called uh, dementia. Uh, that is what the quicksilver does to you. Yes, it opens your mind to the ghost field, but it also makes you sort of delusional and paranoid. <clears throat> delusional and paranoid. Fantastic. What? Um, what an action. Okay. That is your you action. Know, 
Yeah, you know, because it seems like we might be needing some attune in a second. So mm-hmm. okay. uh, mm-hmm. I just, <sighs> what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, after you after you imbibe it, immediately you can hear its voice like whispering, like "No escape, no exit." No, 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 no. Forever. Oh, no, no. Out in the dark forever. So long, so long. Nothing but my own voice. Uh, um, and uh, mm. so, uh, let me ask Seljak, what are you going to do? Because we know that Valkos threw the knife that stopped the uh, stopped the it thing from, from opening. completely getting out. Yeah, more. Uh, I mean, Celiac's whole thing is like f- hearing the appeals of these things oh and wanting them to be free. <laughs> oh my god, we were so close. <laughs> Release me. This this sounds to me so long, like so long. much like that cre- that entity that I've been hearing from underneath that that uh, industrial watchtower. Um, yeah. And I I am A going brother to another entity. I am going to try to consort with this thing to provide it some some comfort. Talk to it. Great. Um, I want that roll, and I want to hear what Celiac says to this thing. Um, yeah. I can cons- again. I'm get- this. I think this is hard. I'm pushing myself again. <laughs> this is this is consort. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is my position? Your position is going to be uh, desperate, um, yep. but if you succeed, it will have the standard effect. It will, uh, it will make this thing calm down a little bit. It will make it less aggressive as it bursts its way through. Oh boy! Okay. It might even decide not to leave the vault for a moment as it listens to you. Okay. Uh, would you? Um, okay. Great. Um, through this uh, chainmail mask, which is never left. Um, I it's like I can hear you, my brother. The world of light is gone, and now we all dwell in darkness. But the darkness in which you have been imprisoned is deeper and fouler than most. Is there not a part of you that wishes an escape? There is comfort and succor outside. If you can temper your rage, though justified, there are those that are responsible for it. As his eyes like swivel over to Flint. Um, uh, yeah, um, calm your rage and be at peace. Very good. Uh, Excellent. You may roll, sir, and that is. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh two my sixes. god! Oh my god! Two sixes! Two dice, two sixes! <laughs> I've uh, suddenly. You I'm have wow. changed the wow. scene, my friend. The dice is hot. Wow, 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 wow. Never rager. Guide me. <gasps> and instead of it bursting forth, long strands of darkness start to kind of like weave their way out and they start to form like an intricate geometric design and they sort of create this like mandala in the air in front of Selyak. Meanwhile, I can tell you what Flint does. Suddenly all the ghosts that are like ripping at Flint, Flint activates something on his person and (laughs) this electroplasmic (gasps) field goes up around him and they all like... (sighs) are like um, shocked away from him for a second. He's turned on his own personal lightning tower on his aye, um, aye, aye. person uh, and he begins running down this dark passage away from all of you. Oh no. I'm going to go and give chase. What about uh, Juliet? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I think Juliet will follow Valkos because I think she's scared. Part of the yeah. uh, dementia happening of this, like, liquid has come out and is forming in front of Celiac, and she's. Like, no, no, no. Am I really seeing this? Yeah. I don't want to be in the darkness. I don't want to be trapped here. Falcos, wait! I'll <laughs> just, like, run after. Yeah. 
And I can tell you that um, it's almost like this thing is awaiting your instructions, Selyak. So what are you telling oh, it to man. do? Oh, <clears throat> man. You are an anarchic spirit. You flow into a vessel for a time. You have your moment. And then you depart. All things in this world rise and fall. All too briefly, but there is an essence which lasts forever. And that is what you are. You are not meant to be enclosed forever in so small a space. And he who oppressed you, confined you, held you in burden to bear his hateful yoke for far too long, even now seeks to elude your sacred judgment. Your vengeance is at hand. We are not your confiners. We are your instruments. <laughs> Seek <laughs> your revenge. And I sick this thing on him. So this weird mandala of like black oil that is floating in front of you suddenly turns into like, uh, you know, 50 little missiles, like little pointed blades uh, uh, made of black oil and starts to float uh, down the hallway toward where Flint ran. And now we come to Valkos who has given chase and Valkos, Flint falls to the ground and as he does so, he rolls over and he's got an enormous pistol pointed right at your face. Great. Flint is about to fire into you. This is uh, something that is going to put a hole in your torso because you are close enough that it would be point blank range. Valkos, okay. what do you do? I'm going to use my armor, mm -hmm. essentially, which I have. Oh, and yeah. I'm ready for that. So I've got my armor and I have a pistol too as well, which I'm going <laughs> to use for my final uh, load. <laughs> and I am going to just boom, pull that trigger as well at the same time. Okay, what action are you rolling? Finesse. Are, are these okay. simultaneous? Like, are our actions happening? Is it like a... If you would like for something to happen right now, it certainly would can. It, would it be skirmish? I think it'd be skirmish, right? You could, you could, I would allow skirmish to happen. It's point blank range. You guys are kind of getting close and firing. Yeah, I would allow skirmish. And in fact, I'm not, can I take my pistol back and just use my, my signature blade, my little dagger blade that I'm going my Severosi <laughs> blade instead? You may retcon back to your blade. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. And Juliet, it sounded like you wanted something, you wanted to do yes. something in this moment. Yes, I see them both <clears throat> pointing about to shoot each other. Can I use a, my blowgun and darts? and shoot a dart with standstill poison towards uh, Flint, which will paralyze him. Yes, you him. may. Yes, you may. Um, both of you can roll your actions right now. Um, Valkos, yours is desperate for standard. Uh, Juliet, yours is controlled for standard. What does a fine hand weapon do, though? Does, it, does it change hand anything? Weapon? Yeah. Um, I don't think it gives you any extra effect or anything. Okay. I think it's just... It's just... It okay, allows you to use it. Oh, sorry, with dagger to pistol. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Desperate for standard. Yeah. Uh, no bonus die because I am struggling. Fuck. Oh, yeah. oh. oh. Wow. I so uh, Valco just rolled a two, one, and a two. So that means that a bullet, uh, a ball. Wait, 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 wait. Is firing? Wait. Uh, is maybe about to fire toward him? But let's see how Juliet does. Oh, you genius. Julia rolls a six. Six. So <clears throat> the finger goes tight on the trigger. Your knife goes wide. You you don't get it. You don't get in close enough or or maybe you throw it and it misses his head. His finger starts to tighten on the trigger and suddenly thunk, a dart goes into his neck and he freezes there. His face in a rictus. Veins popping out on his head. He's not able to pull the trigger any farther. <sighs> And that is when suddenly, weaving between you come these <gasps> strands of dark fluid, and they arrive at Flint, and he's not even able to scream. His vocal cords are completely paralyzed as these tiny fingers of black fluid start to dissect him. <laughs> it rips off a square of forehead. 
it disconnects part of his jaw. One uh, and two go into his eyeball and start to hollow and drill it out. And you watch as this spirit takes apart his flesh like he's a machine, unscrewing oh my God. bones, uh, disconnecting facial features, and soon he is unraveling before your very eyes. It is completely horrific, and it is so horrific, in fact, that you are uh, in danger of taking a, a, a fear harm from this from witnessing this. It is so awful that your sanity is in danger. Do you understand? Your very oh, mind yeah. might be shattered by seeing this. <laughs> I need to know what you're going to do to avoid like really witnessing in this and having it really damage your sanity. I'm just going to keep... I'm going to run back to where this thing was from and go to <laughs> close the gate. Yeah, you're gonna go try to close the gate. Okay, yeah. uh, what action are you gonna use for that? Um, probably. Oh, God, I think it's again like a. I think it's messier than a finesse. Um, perhaps maybe it it's a, maybe it's a prowl because I'm trying to get away from this, you know, scared like scared like you know. I think it is a prowl. And how about you, Juliet? What are you going to do? I think Juliet, who's already dealing with the uh, dementia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be uh, harder for her, I'll tell you is that. Is going to leap at Valkos and like hold him and like desperately like put, maybe she's at his feet and is holding on to his ankles like don't leave me, don't leave me, please, please, please. Oh, you must get me out of here. I cannot be left in the darkness. I cannot. Do not let the darkness cross <gasps> me. Please, Valkos, Valkos, Valkos. Uh, Valkos, if you get a if you get a 6, you can take her with you. If okay. you don't, you can't. Oh my god. So what is the position? The position is, I think this is desperate. Oh, okay. uh, and it will have the standard effect that you will get back to the door and be able to shut it. And, oh, and just please. so I'm, I'm, I'm clear, the door is the door... The vault? <laughs> Where the fuck is the vault? What is yeah, the sorry, door? The, the vault. <laughs> Great. Just and, uh, sure. and, and Celiac, if you want to intervene, you certainly can try as because well. Because I now have some some portion of whatever this thing is levitating in front of me. That's correct. Um, okay. <laughs> Celiac, let's find out what happens with this role, and then maybe you can you yeah. can do what you you would do in this Obviously, situation. Mm -hmm. Juliet, please. I, okay, I muster some courage, <laughs> and I trust, trust my die roll. <laughs> That's a one. Oh, oh my God. God. That is just a one. Okay. Um, uh, uh -oh. You are going to take a level two harm, uh, and we're just gonna call it uh, panicked. Oh my god. And uh, so is Juliet, you're gonna take it too, because you oh, just sat there. So you're gonna take a level great. two harm called panicked, uh, and both of you are, uh, uh, that's gonna affect anything you do that involve, that, you know, it's gonna affect pretty much anything you do, because uh, if you're panicked, there are some things you're not gonna be good at except for running away batting down doors to get away like things you could do when you're panicked are possible but uh mm -hmm. i'm gonna turn i'm gonna i'm gonna ask Selyak what he's going to do now all right Selyak, you are aware of what has happened yes but you weren't close enough to see the, the thing rip flint to shreds maybe mm -hmm. you were smart enough to not look yeah, directly yeah. at it while it's doing <laughs> that um I, Celiac does not want to shut this thing in the vault. He's just, this special ability of his occultist. I know the secret ways to consort with ancient powers, which I just did, critically. Yes. Um, <laughs> once I have consorted with one, oh, no. I can then gain, I, I, I then can command followers of it. I have just consorted with the ancient power, an ancient power. This is precisely what I have always wanted. Oh God. I just promised its freedom in opposition to its confiner and imprisoner. I want to, if there's any more of it back there, I am opening this door. Oh my God. Um, no need to roll for that. You, uh, you pull out Valkos's knife as he, uh, you know, sits screaming on the ground, you know, uh, 
<laughs> 30 yards away. You pull his knife out. You uh, finish turning the door. You throw it wide open. Uh, and the, the, it's not just a, an amorphous blob of black oil. You can see now that it forms rings inside of cubes inside of other geometrical constructions that are not quite possible uh, and it screams from every angle that it has created it's like it screams and its whispers come out of the angles in its geometry and it uh, pours forth and I can tell you that Celiac even though you are an incredible yeah. whisper and that, that this, this, this is, is what you've trained for deranging. there is a danger here looking uh -huh. upon the face of the thing uh, and I know this is very Lovecraft it's the first time we've gotten into our pure Lovecraft territory but looking upon the face of the thing is enough to drive a man mad or at least give him a level 2 harm so I need to know what you're doing in this moment as the thing pours forth out of the vault what are you doing to protect yourself the mask offers some protection it does, doesn't it? It does. Um, well the, uh, then, I'm gonna rule this then. You don't need to tell me how you're protecting your sanity. And, and there's also spiritual it. armor. Um, <laughs> oh wow! If I believe, uh, or the armor has a has a spiritual component, perhaps. Or and then, um, I don't need an action for you for that. I need an action for you to handle the fact that this thing is just barreling down on Juliet and Valkos. Okay. And all of its little needles look like it's setting to about to work on okay, them. Okay, I, I, <gasps> I want to stop what? that. Uh, I mean, I just I, I turned it on. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. It's so... These, I critical that consort. I just want to maintain this relationship. And... <laughs> Great. Then, our beautiful and it, friendship. It, it's controlled, whatever you're about to do, I think. Controlled. Yeah, are, and what are you okay. doing? What action are you doing? Are you locking it away again? Or are you telling it to go somewhere else? Or are I'm you telling, just telling it to it go somewhere to... else? Okay. Um, um, and what action are you using? Once again, I think this has to be a. Uh, I mean, this. Ha oh God! Now, now this is harder because I can't push. Um, <laughs> well, uh, this is a consort again. Um, okay. Unless this is a. A tune. Wouldn't it be a sway? It could be or a maybe sway. Maybe a tune. Actually, no, an a tune because you're 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 attuned to this now thing, this thing, right? Mm -hmm. It is you're connected. It is some, I think perhaps connected, like yeah, yeah, we are connected. So on a on a spiritual level, no longer speaking, but like, but praying to this thing. I um. I will attempt to speak to it, to tell it to be free. To so yeah, let me just set up the difference. With the tune, it's almost like using your supernatural might and your force of will to force it away from them. Mm. With consort, you would be like, we're friends, we have the same goals. With sway, you'd be like, just yeah. convincing it, please don't hurt my friends. You've chosen to kind of do force of will against it, to use basically occult language and spells to like make it back down is that right that's correct okay great um uh, again i'm gonna say controlled because you already have this thing on your side <clears throat> controlled okay. and i'm gonna say for standard effect it will not dissect your friends but if you fail oh boy they're gonna take another level two harm which means they take a level three harm can I take a, a yeah, devil's... Well, no, it doesn't mean they both take a level three harm, but I believe that Juliet has two level two harms right now. So if mm -hmm. she took a level two harm, one would that pop up to level three, and that would be bad. She would be mm -hmm. out of the... Uh, yes. I understand so, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the danger here. Okay. Is there a devil's bargain that I could maybe get another die that I could hear or not? Yeah, there is a devil's bargain. There is a devil's bargain. Uh, the devil's bargain is if these ghosts see you consorting with this thing and commanding this thing, ghosts for a while are not going to like you. It's going mm. to kind of get out that you are a poisonous practitioner of black arts. Okay. And it's going to spread around the ghost community. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So my, 
Okay. Your ability, your ability with to ghosts. like sway or consort sort with ghosts is going to be hampered. I'll take it. Great, oh, take your die. Wow. Five. A, a success with a consequence. The consequence is that the <laughs> thing turns to you and uh, it pulls its needles away from Valkos and Juliet. Oh. Its bulk rolls toward you down the passageway. It's carrying little pieces of flint mm -hmm. and little, it's created oh. little jars <laughs> out of its own corpus and it's holding flint in a bunch of little jars. You see his eyeball in one jar, mm -hmm. it holds up to you. It holds up another sphere and you can see his teeth are floating around inside of it. And it says, but I require more flesh. And its needle comes all the way up to your face and then down to your neck and it slices off a piece of you, Selyak. Yes. Big bloody chunk comes out of your neck and f like right here, and you take a level one harm, bleeding. Okay. Um, and it oh my sucks god sucks that back into itself, uh, and then it starts to roll away Very down well. the passage somewhere bleeding else. Is a, and and again, it's just like pain is a door. This is. This is the stigmata that I bear for you. By what name shall I know you? Um, I think that it would call itself, uh, in, in, a, in a number of tongues, it re re replies to you that it is the builder. What Just the? F no, man. What is going on? <laughs> you are the builder. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be your adept, your apprentice, oh, your foreman, no. No. your Freemason. Oh, and uh, mm. and and as it goes away, uh, now it's time to get out. <laughs> yeah, I was going to yeah. say like I think let's go. Left I want to run back down the passage that the uh, that my friends went down, assuming that Flint was this was an escape hatch for him. So. Yeah, Let's. so um, you you realize when you get you get to some stairs and then you get to the top of them and you open a clock that's on the first floor of the of the lair. Oh, great! And uh, this is maybe the time where uh, like shall we <gasps> trigger oh. the device to uh, make it not have its intended purpose, but perhaps to cover our escape. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna definitely, like, in a panic state, just like push the button. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, boom! like, this enormous, like, sonic burst goes off outside of the lair. Um, and uh, it, it makes everything kind of shake. It feels like you were in a small earthquake. Mm, a couple things like books fall off the shelf. A candlestick smashes into the floor. Uh, you're not sure what happened, but you know what happened right outside. Okay. okay. Um, am, I'm, am I in a fit state of mind, Jared, to look for this specific vial of uh, the lady? Oh, yeah. So... Um, Listen, I think that you are not. I, well, mm. Let me put it this way. You'll take the negative one die penalty. Okay. But you can if you want. Do you want to try to find Galena? Do you want to search the house? I think, but the thing is, what, what do you do if you roll an insight at that? Like, when you've got no die on it? Is it just a um, failed effect? Um, so you're saying if you use an action and you don't, if you don't succeed in finding Galena, what will happen? No, it was in like my insight because I've got no yeah. die in it, so I can't necessarily use it, can I? No, an insight's an attribute anyway. You wouldn't use it right now. You'll be using an action to try to find this one specific spirit jar somewhere in the house. Interesting. Maybe I'm trying. Maybe I do it. I'm. I'm going around commanding people, screaming in their faces, just like, "Where's the jar? Where's the jar?" Like, I'm afraid that there is no one to command right now. You are looking around and the lair seems empty. Okay. Um, God, I don't know what I would do. Um, 
because I can't roll a survey because I got no die in it. You can. You, you just, can. You, you just you roll oh, you two roll, dice. You roll two and you take the lower. That oh, was okay. your question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you, Josephine. But then if I take one die less, does that mean oh, I essentially really roll? That means I roll nothing. Um, no. Listen, if you if you if you take one die less, you're still you can't get any lower than roll two and take the lower. You can't get any worse than that. Okay. Is there a reason? I I just this is something that maybe Celiac wants to know is why do you want this particular one? Yeah. It's just, and I kind of am like I, I okay. Let's say in the in like I don't know if it's a flashback, but I would have said it would be a powerful message to sell this to the path of echoes to and show it, them as yeah it's like it, this is who we are and this is us now you know what i mean let's see if probably, you find it i i love I will that assist let's you. see if you find it i will assist it. you i couldn't do that if i and i take this is my second of two no stress assists okay. so you you don't roll two and take the lower you just roll one and, okay and take it Okay. Let's see how it goes. And what, what you're, position you're would it be? Through, you're searching through this. The house is kind of destroyed now. I yeah. mean, a bomb went off upstairs. So you're just digging through the detritus. You're going. You're running around into every room. You need to make your escape soon, as as yeah. Juliet has pointed out. Uh, and out. you, uh, you, you, let's see if you find that jar. What's the position? The position is, I think it's risky, and it's for standard effect. Okay. Let's try this. One. It's a three. <laughs> you don't find it. You don't find it. Shit. Okay, that's fine. We've Flint made an effect. Flint is dead. Flint is dead. Falcos, we have to go. We have to get out of here. No. It's, just, it's a message. It's a... It's a... We need to... We need to... And I just sort of... I don't know. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to... I don't know what to do. I think, I'm, I think I am in this sort of weird, crazy state at the moment of trying Can to relay this message. Trust Celiac anymore? Did you see what that thing does? It was just about to cut us up, and it even took a chunk of him. Tendrils yes. of black ooze start to appear in the floor. Mm-hmm. Okay, we need to get oh, the fuck no, out. No, no, All right, no, cool. No, no. I, I kind of see. Yeah, that that makes me book it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Enough to make me like scream and leave. Um, as you run out into the courtyard, you see that there were uh, at least six more guards. They're all on the ground now, holding their heads and their ears, uh, <laughs> blood trickling out their ears, and among them is the guy that you would have sent in. <laughs> Run They're out. They're all sitting on the ground, uh, you know, reeling from Deafened. this flashbang thing that you set off. I t- uh, literally, yeah. I'm just going to keep running out. I don't give a, I don't care about these people. Yeah, I run up behind Valkos, and, and it's like, Julia really takes a moment, sees it, you know, so panicked. It's like, I need to go, I need to go. And then it's like, oh, hey, it worked. <laughs> and then keeps going. Uh, very good. Can um, I? Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm so desperate for this thing. Is there a devil's bargain I could do in order to roll again? You know what you could have right now? What? I think that you could have a flashback. And get like trauma. He he, he would, yeah, Do you would. Yeah, you would have to take. You would have to take trauma. That's correct. But wouldn't that take him out of the score? Would he be able to well, enact we're, what you, he's? You have successfully this, completed the score, the, but yeah. uh, oh. Do you want a flashback, Valkos? But I'm going to tell you what the flashback is. Go on. <laughs> what, just all right. Before I accept it, go on. Uh, the flashback is you get the jar, but I'm going to tell you how you got it. Give it to You're me. You're gonna take a trauma. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm so, so happy. as Flint was being deconstructed by the builder, Falco saw that the jar holding Galena was actually on Flint's person. But in order to get close, you had to reach into all the sharp little knives that were taking uh, Flint apart, and you had to reach out and grab the jar, and it cut up your arm really badly. And now there are all these like uh, geometrical little cuts all over your arm, and like this weird occultic design. And um, you um, you take stress for that. I think you had one stress left. Yep. You take one more stress and you take a trauma. What trauma are you going to pick? I think it would be I want to go almost like if I see this. Yeah. I think I'm going to be- I see the geometric shapes. I think I become obsessed 
<gasps> and I start actually oh, looking yeah. at this and I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is beautiful. Oh, no. And there's almost this love and a kind of like, I understand now. Yes. So I, I, think- I can hear Selyak in like in my head and I can hear the voice and I'm just like, and it's almost as if like as well, like the panic state of me is like, almost this other side of Valkos leaving his body as this new obsessive oh, no, self no. just almost takes over. So yeah. Oh I God. Think that, I think that Valkos also, that would that would take you out of the score. So I think that you managed to keep going long enough to like, you know, search around upstairs, even though you already had the jar. Man, you're really right. in a strange mental state. Yeah. Uh, but then as you exit the house with your friends, you collapse and right. they have to drag you the rest of the way. But the hey, score is over. Wait, wait, Ugh. wait, wait. Jared, before we exit completely and all of these men outside with their ears bleeding yeah. in the lawn, I'd like to turn towards them and say, uh, this land belongs to the remnant now. You and we can say it in like a us. really loud voice so they can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, they go, right. What? Huh? Now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> It only takes one of them to be slightly okay on the outskirts to hear. <laughs> They'll tell um, the I, others. I think they get the picture. I think yeah. they get um, the picture. You can, you can fight us on this and keep suffering forever, or you can join us. It's your choice. And then I bolt. And then you bolt. And so I'd like to set a final scene, a final very short scene. Because the whole reason you did this was to take this guy out of the running as the favorite of the Path of Echoes, you know, uh, protege. <laughs> and so I think you meet with Ring from the Path of Echoes. It can be one of you, possibly the one who's not completely panicked and taking negative to their die rolls right now. <laughs> um, or it can be all three of you. It's up to you. Uh, normally, you meet at a lighthouse in, uh, in White Crown. Um, would you like to meet with Ring there and... Tell them that uh, Flint will no longer be selling them spirits, or I, I actually I don't want to force anything on you, but I do think that there's a final moment with the Path of Echoes here. You tell me what it is. I would have I'm out of this by the way, so I'm not yeah. even gonna. But I would have you would have you know, I would have told you about the vial, so it mm-hmm. probably would have given it to you, Selyak, and be right. like you know give it to her or Excellent. give it to Ring. Very yeah. well, um, Selyak. I thought you hated this. I thought spirit trafficking was your antithesis. What I understand of this path, I do not, the path of echoes, I do not approve that they would seek so mercantile a source as Flint has offered. But they do as near as I understand. Because I don't think that the... We know precisely what the Path of Echoes does. You haven't been initiated no. into all of its Not mysteries. Not like Valkos has. Um, we, yeah. just know that, we just know that, that we, we you worked with a ghost who was walking around mm. free. That's um, right. Mm. So uh, it's like, here the spirit will not be confined in a bottle, in a prison. It will once again be able to exert its will across the membrane between fields. Fine, then you go. Go to your path of echoes and whatever else you have planned. And uh, Juliet's gonna curl up into a ball and just stay in the grotto. Maybe she can go hang out with her girlfriend. Oh God. Um, <laughs> Uh, we'll uh, we'll touch on that next episode, but mm-hmm. uh, Selyak, yes, you uh, you have a meeting with Ring. Okay, so yeah, at the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. You summoned me. I summon you because we have not heard from you for a time. I have been in contact with your friend Valkos. Ah. Unfortunately, he is not ready to be initiated into deeper mysteries. But we think he has great potential. How can I help you, Selyak Khan? 
Volkos is a man of incredible ability and talent. We both know that the spirits of those who have passed yearn for a life outside of this. I hold out the bottle with Galena. Hmm. This is one of Flint's. I recognize the jars. Ah, yes. Unfortunate that Mr. Flint has of late suffered, I think, an accident. That is unfortunate. May I ask what happened to him? Now here I only speak of the rumors that move among the towers, but those who dabble in forces that they are not equipped to contain will often suffer the blowback of effects that they did not foresee. An explosion was heard. This is what I have learned. An explosion? That's very messy. Indeed. And you have brought this to me... Why? It is a show of goodwill. That if you... I should say that... To remind you of the value of our partnership. Ring takes the jar. And to show you exactly who we are and what we represent, so you know who you're dealing with. Ring. Ring's really fine. Her fingers covered in rings. Uh, <laughs> takes the lid of the jar and <laughs> pops it open in one motion and pours the contents out onto the cold, wet stones, and the image of a handsome woman of middle age sort of (laughs) flickers there for a moment. Uh, Her eyes open, and she looks up at both of you, and then she crawls toward the edge of the dock, this spirit, and into the waves. Spirits are meant to roam free. And we are of one accord. Do not you appreciate when partners are mutually aligned? We are aligned. Very well. We hope you share our vision that one day the towers will come down. (laughs) <laughs> we were only made for vessels for a brief time. Out of the chaos we emerge, and into it we shall fly again. And if you need our services in times to come, Flint, as I say, rumors tell, is indisposed. Call upon the remnant. You will hear from us soon. Goodbye, Selyak Khan. For now. Goodbye, Ring. Ring walks off along the wet stones back to wherever Ring makes their home. And... And I have the feeling as, as they turn that like that there's a face that like swivels around and is watching me from the back of their head. And under each electric light that Ring walks under, it flickers for a moment. It goes dark. (laughs) And then flickers back on as Ring moves on. And that is where we will end for today. Oh my god. Thank you, Joseph (sighs) McAdam, Abu Salim, and Ross Bryant for a fantastic score. Things get weirder and darker in Duskfall every time we play. (laughs) 
I hope uh, you, the Glass Cannon Nash, will tune in next time for more downtime shenanigans. We can't wait to bring that episode to you. But uh, until then, uh, happy haunting. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, my gosh.